I found the best homemade camera gear on the internet. Like a DIY camera slider, a softbox only using materials found in your house, a ton of custom lens filters, and more. To start things off, I wanted to see if I could use this dash cover as a cheap alternative to a more pricey light reflector. Just like any other reflector, it's got a dark side and of course, a reflective side. The difference is, I only paid $7.79 for this. This thing can become really useful when you're outside with portrait photography because you can use the light from the sun and reflect that back onto your subject. Honestly, there is no downfall with buying something like this compared to a more expensive reflector. So really, this is just saving you money. So the dash cover clearly did a great job, but later in this video, I'm gonna see if I can use a Ziploc bag to replace a camera rain cover. This next homemade project just might be my favorite one. I made this softbox right here only using these materials. First, I made a cardboard outline that both extended past the light and got gradually wider to help spread the light evenly. Then I lined it with tin foil so the light would bounce in a more focused path. Finally, I put a diffuser on the front. So right now this scene is lit with only one LED panel with no softbox on it. And the lighting's kind of harsh. All I did was swap the softbox onto the light stand without any other adjustments. It's in the shot now because it's much bigger, so that technically is a downside of the softbox. But when we take a look at how soft the lighting on my face is now, it makes up for it dramatically. For the price and time it took to make this, that's pretty dang impressive. And now I'm going to see if I can recreate my own homemade camera rain cover. So for this one, all you're going to need is a large plastic Ziploc bag. Place it over the camera, cut out a hole for your lens, and then you have your own homemade camera rain cover. Kind of nervous. I hope this doesn't ruin my camera. We'll see. I don't think I gave this a fair shot. If I had put a rubber band around the lens, I don't think there would have been any issues with the bag coming off. I definitely don't think this is going to keep your camera completely dry, but I think it will definitely add an extra layer of protection. There are countless options out there for lens filters that can add a layer of style to your next project. The problem is they can get pretty expensive. That's why I made three lens filters that practically cost nothing. The first filter only requires a few pieces of fishing line to be placed on the lens with tape. Then shine a bright light at an angle and it will bounce off the fishing line to create this unique look. How about some custom bokeh? Or is it bokeh? Take a dark piece of paper and cut out a hole in any shape that you'd like. Then place it in front of your lens to get this eye-catching effect. Think about all the possibilities here. I mean, you can get bokeh to look like anything now. Next, take either chapstick or Vaseline and spread a thin layer on your lens. I recommend spreading it on a cheap UV filter like this one I found here, so you're not potentially ruining your lens. This will create a mist effect that looks pretty cool. Like the fishing line, you can shine a light at an angle to create another interesting effect. Also, once you have this on your lens, it creates some pretty interesting flares. Now before I show you how I made that shot only using homemade camera gear, let's take a look at this amazingly simple way to mount your phone. All you're gonna need for this simple trick is a paper cup. Simply cut an outline on the bottom side of the cup, place your phone inside, and bam, you're done. I'm in love with the simplicity of this paper cup method. It only took me about two minutes to make, it was practically free, and it does the job great. It's a duck. I realized that it realistically is not gonna work for a lot of people because a tripod is much more practical, but for what it took to make this, it's kind of unbeatable. And now for the biggest project. I found the best homemade camera slider on the internet and made one myself to see if it's actually good. First, I cut a half inch EMT pipe in half using a metal pipe cutter. Then I punched out the holes in this electrical box for the pipes to run through. I also bent these little pins back to make clearance for the pipes. Next, I used these EMT connectors to mount the pipes to the box like so. In the process, I noticed this sticky label on the pipe. So I took it off with Goo Gone to prevent any extra friction on the slider. Then I attached one three quarter inch PVC T on each pipe. I attached a little extra PVC T to each T to help with the stability of the slider. Then I mounted the metal plate to the PVC with a drill and screws. The slider is best used with a quick release plate that I personally don't have. So I used the metal plate that comes with most DJI gimbals instead. I drilled in two screws, carefully making sure I didn't damage the gimbal plate. To finish it off, I put some rubber feet on the bottom of the electrical boxes to help with the slider while sliding around. Now, Filmrite did an amazing job coming up with this design and creating a tutorial on their channel. If you want to see it, there's a link in the description. So now we have this camera slider built. It didn't take that long. It only took me all of about two hours to complete this whole project. There are actually two variations to this slider. You have this side to side movement like so, 
but because I'm using the metal plate that comes with the Ronin gimbals, I can turn this like so, turn the camera, and it instantly becomes a push-in slider. One of the coolest shots I've been able to get with this push-in method is a dolly zoom. All you need is a zoom lens and then zoom in or out in the opposite direction that you're moving the slider and you'll create a dolly zoom effect. Now, one of the biggest flaws of this slider is it's actually not that smooth right out of the gate. So one of the things I've done to remedy that is using olive oil. That might be surprising to you, but it's a pretty cheap lubricant that you probably have in your house. Just apply some on the metal pipe and bam, you've instantly made this slider much smoother. I get it's pretty messy. I actually have to wipe the slider off after I'm done using it. And you have to be mindful of the surfaces you're using it on. If you don't want to get messy using something like oil, you can just get grease at a hardware store and use that instead. With using just a little bit of creativity and thinking outside the box, I was able to make some pretty useful stuff. Buying gear is almost always going to get you something that is better quality and more reliable. And to top it off, if you want to use any of this stuff on a professional set, it's probably not going to fly. But if you're just a personal creator that's looking to level up your next project, I think using homemade gear is a great option. But no matter how you do it, just remember, go out and get creative.